Hi there, and welcome to another episode of 411 Pop Culture, where real people talk about really everything. I'm your host, Justin Steele, and with me tonight is Danielle Almendra, and we are going to talk about Lifetime's adaptations of Ruby and Pearl in the Mist. Uh, we'll all do it in one episode, but it'll be a two-part episode, so that uh, we get right into it. How are you doing tonight, Danielle? Did you enjoy the uh, the Lifetime adaptation? Oh, it over-exceeded my expectations. Yeah. I was... Out of all the adaptations so far, this first one, oh my gosh, it was just every everything in my head. It just matched with it, how they changed the story a little bit worse, what parts they left out were. It just was, oh, it was fabulous. I was very pleased with it too. Fabulous. I, uh, you know, I think it's one of the ones where we have, of course, we have the step back covers. You look at the looks and the stuff. Although it was always confusing, I always assumed Ruby had red hair, and yeah. I feel like they kind of gave her reddish hair. But if you remember Pearl in the Mist, the step back cover for that, they have dark hair, yeah. and then it goes back to very, very red hair mm -hmm. in all that glitters. So <clears throat> because of that, I think that all of a sudden it was like a domino effect that so many things that I might care about in other adaptations, like houses, etc. I was, I've never had too much of an attachment to. We spoke a little bit about like Grant, the cabin or the, the sort of house in the bayou, mm -hmm. Grand Mears house. And while I, I always pictured it more like on a river bank, I think the interiors were spot on. I think we really enjoyed that. I loved the performances of Ruby and Giselle. I think they were spot on. Um, I think we were talking about how, you know, it's one of the stories I was, I was wondering if at first, when they always talked about an adaptation of Ruby since the 90s. Mm -hmm. Ruby has been like, after Flowers in the Attic, the most talked about adaptation. So that's why I was super surprised when they did Heaven first. Yeah. Um, not, I mean, I think Heaven's a wonderful story and everything, but just Ruby it's since, yeah, I remember when like the internet first was happening, it was something <laughs> I looked up and it was something that they always talked about. Adaptation, Lifetime, Light Ruby. Adaptation, yeah. Lifetime, Ruby. So I've been anticipating it for so long. And of all the ghost-written stuff, um, <clears throat> I feel like as much as I love Dawn and the Cutler series, which is a little darker, I almost feel like it. Dawn, is, and I love it. I think it's great. I feel like it was almost a practice for him to get to the yeah. story of Ruby. And while we watched the preview for Pearl in the Mist, it looks like, because we're... Just so everybody knows, we're filming. We just watched Ruby. We just, just watched it. Watched the so premiere. tomorrow night, technically, we'll do a review of it in this episode. But we're technically not going to watch it till tomorrow. Correct. But according to the commercial, it looks like it's going to be really exciting. Mm -hmm. And although I love the se oh, I always love the second novel in every series. Yeah. I do feel like Pearl of the Mist is the one series, or the the laundry series is the yeah. one series where the second book I always feel like is a little boring. Pearl yeah. in the Mist, but all that glitters, so much happens, and I'm so excited for that. But anyway, just um, <clears throat> we just watched it, so our thoughts might be a little bit jumbled. <laughs> but like I said, this is going to be two episodes in one. So we'll probably talk about anything we remember. Well, I think this is probably the closest you guys are going to get to like a live response sure, or reaction for sure, yeah. from us because it's so fresh in our heads. Right away. But anyway, we were talking about like the houses and stuff, and See, I just I, I think the house the by actually I think both houses, and I'm usually the big yeah, one about houses for sure. And actually, we disagree on this this time around because I think both, even the Dumas house. I think it looks great. I was yeah. just I was just saying that I feel like I don't have as much of attachment to the series, like the house yeah. and the hair and everything is Ruby, as I did with like Dollingangers and Castiles, like with the if dark Ruby hair and stuff. Ruby had red hair. But I feel like she oh. should have red oh, hair. Well, I mean, her name's Ruby, red. I right. mean, you think red. I, I just, I, but <laughs> they did in Pearl in the yes. Mist, it was oh black God, yeah. hair. In the first book, it's almost like a brownish red, the step back, step back cover. In Pearl in the Mist, it's black. And then by all the glitters, it's red, red again. Yeah. And in Hidden Jewel 2, it shows Ruby in the background. Anyway, we loved it. I thought it was great. Um, so Danielle, what are all your thoughts about it so far? I just wanted to say as far as the house and stuff like that, I pictured it on the bayou, but inside thought it looked great. The Dumas house, I didn't think of it so sheltered by like trees, but I still thought it looked great and wonderful inside and perfect. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I really, I was excited watching this. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was super excited. Like I just, there were parts where I was like, Ooh, I, I have no problem admitting this. I screamed with the snake. Like I was like, mm -hmm. No! I knew it was coming. I, I did, and I did it, and then it happened, and it was there, and I was like, Woo! but I just, I, I feel like, again, the last thing I'll say, and I promise I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let Danielle speak, Maybe. but the last thing I just want to say that's coming off the top of my head is that, um, I the one thing about the ghost written stories versus 
with V.C. Andrews, the actual V.C. Andrews stories. Her books, you know, like the first book takes place, Father's Night, three and a half years. Petals on the Wind takes place over ten years. Yeah. The Ghost Rider does tend to do from from Dawn to Secrets of the Morning to Twilight's Child. That all takes place over about seven years. Yeah. Ruby, Pearl yes. in the Mist, all that glitters takes place over about three and a half, four years. So I feel like yeah. they can adapt the ghost written stuff maybe a little easier than V.C. Yeah. Andrews. So even though I, it'll never be as great as the original V.C. Andrews stuff, in terms of an adapt adaptation, I think they'll have a little bit more success. I think that in one of our prior videos, and our fans would remember this, I'm sure, but you had talked about how um, in My Sweet Audrina, like, we understand why Vera is all nasty and everything like that, and that Daphne was just horrible. Right. And actually, um, I just recently reread Ruby, and I don't think she was just naturally mean. Mm. I think the movie definitely portrayed her as just mean but i think going back and oh, see i have the opposite reaction really i felt like in the <laughs> books when i'm reading daphne i'm like maybe not so much in ruby because you don't know who she is quite away but in pearl in the mist she's yeah. just villain and i'm like no mm. there's like no three dimension i felt like in this adaptation they gave at least at least daphne felt for giselle she really was heartbroken and I, that made me like her a little bit more because I think that she accepted Giselle, you know... As her daughter. As her yeah. daughter. Yeah, and I remember that from Ruby, yes, the novel. Yes, and then, like, when Ruby comes along, it just, it does bring back all those memories. And it she, shatters her illusion that I she's upheld. I mean, she upheld. grew up rich, she's, yeah. you know, a Creole, she's all about image. I thought Giselle or Daphne? I'm talking about Daphne. Oh, okay, I mean, okay. Both. I mean, they're Sure, very, but sure, okay. You know, that works for both. Good. They're rich, yeah. and they have, you know, she is, image is everything. Mm -hmm. It's almost kind of like, um... Like a Jillian or even like a uh, sure. Corinne. Yeah. You know, just what people perceive. And I think that Ruby was just this, you can't hide where she came from because yeah. of the story they had to concoct. Yeah. And she just couldn't get past it. And she had to try to make her look evil because she couldn't accept her thoughts about Cajuns. Absolutely. You know, like she all always the thought they were bad people. And all yes, that. Yeah, and so absolutely. she couldn't accept that. <clears throat> Which obviously leaked onto Giselle. Giselle yes, grows up having absolutely. that. Absolutely, yep. Mm -hmm. And I do want to say with Giselle too, I, I, I feel like Giselle is the closest that the ghostwriter ever came to creating a V.C. Andrews character. I feel like because yeah. she's not just all bad or all good, mm -hmm. like, I, I love, I get delighted with the character yeah. of Giselle, just like I do when I'm reading Vera. As horrible mm -hmm. as Vera is, yeah. and when you find out that she does all those terrible things, you are sort of like, oh, wow, she's wretched. But mm -hmm. I, when I'm reading the books, I'm like, oh, Vera's on right now. <laughs> or when I'm reading the books, like, I'm like, Giselle is on right do. now. Yes, yes. As much as you're, yeah. like, in the POV of, like... And I, I also really liked that they made Ruby a little bit of a stronger character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you're reading the books, Ruby, she does play the martyr a little yes. bit. When mm -hmm. you're 14 or 15, that's the character you want to identify with, yeah. the good one, the one that's good. But now as an adult, I, I definitely get a little bit more pleasure in reading the villain. The sort of like, just I'm like, ooh, just something's you know, happening so, right now. I get yeah, so excited. I, I think when I was rereading Ruby, because I was prepping for this adaptation, we've been waiting for it for a long yeah. time. So I went back and refreshed myself. And I same remember here, same here. when she's in the studio with Bo mm -hmm. doing the new portrait, and then they're like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I was literally, my stomach was turning. I'm like, oh my God, they're going to get caught. They're going to get caught. They're going to get, like, I was just like, oh my God, it was yeah, horrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like almost that trepidation that takes you back to that time where you're like sneaky and doing things <laughs> you probably shouldn't or right. you know, whatever. And then like, I, but I never went back to the thought of the parent. Like I never, when I was just watching this or even like, I was like, oh yeah, Daphne, you better get in there right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> but when I was reading the book, I never thought that I was just worried, you know? Yeah, for sure. But it's so funny. I just, oh, it was just fantastic. I do want to comment on that they actually played the music. That was something that both he and I yeah, were watching Yeah, we really watching enjoyed it. that. Um, you know, we know as V.C. Andrews fans that, you know, obviously these stories have to, you know, go back in mm -hmm. time a little bit because they're going to, you know, go Lead forward. up to their children, yes, et cetera, yes, yes. yeah. So, like, in the Heaven Adit, or the Castile series, as you mm -hmm. pointed out, they didn't really put us in a time. Yeah, when we were first started yeah. watching mm -hmm. Heaven, we were almost like, oh, wait, is this going to take place, like, maybe in the, yeah. the 90s, 80s, or maybe 80s, even, yeah. or even now, and then, mm -hmm. it, then it came out, like, we're like, oh, it is the 50s, yeah. or whatever, yes. But this one, because of the music. Yes, mm-hmm. It was very clear that it takes place in the 50s, and yeah. I love that. I did have a reaction when uh, Daphne took Ruby to the Institute. 
I know oh, we're, yeah. we're jumping all around, but you know we're so excited right now. Yeah. Um, and I said, really, and I looked at him and I said, really, a woman running an institution in the fifties because they've already put us in a time. They put right, us in the fifties right. because he's like, well, why not? Like, because I was like, Doctor Cheryl's a guy, and he's like, it's not that big of a deal, and I'm like, but they've set this in the fifties. There and would not true. be a woman running this. Institution I mean, I, I don't know for sure that that's true or not, but it's definitely unlikely that a woman. Yeah. What I was saying would yeah, be like, right. and it most would be a nurse in the institution. Right, so, right. but um, overall, too, I really we we also talked about Bo. I mean, that's mm-hmm. the one thing I guess that was nice about watching these with commercials live yeah. was that because um, I, I, I did that. Well, I did that with Heaven or with My Sweet mm-hmm. Audrina, but I was alone. We didn't watch yeah. it together. Um, but with this one, we watched it with commercials, so we had time to kind of talk between the commercials and really yeah, think. Make our but comments. But I really thought, I really liked the character of Bo. I thought they did a really yeah. good job with Bo. Well, you I and you. I had to come around. Yeah. I had to come it's around. It's so perfect. She was like, no, no. She's like, well, he's no art, and he's no art. And I'm like, well, yeah, he's no art. Like, we really liked how, uh, the William Mosley yeah. played Arden. In my suit after now, I'm like, well, that's irrelevant. Think about it in this context. It can't, they can't all be William Mosley, you know. They why can't not? all be cast, I mean, but uh, because he was great and he was great. <laughs> but I was when I saw this bow, I was like, oh, good. No, the hair good. was there. And it, yeah. At first, I thought his hair was brown, and I guess after we started talking about it, mm-hmm. I was, it was a dirty blonde. Well, he's supposed to have, or no, it's Paul in the books. Yeah. Paul has this. I, we're gonna not pronounce French things well at all. We were both <laughs> like when they were like Dumas. We're like Dumas. I know. We're like Dumas. <laughs> I mean, I may have always like suspected it this. that, like we were talking about, we have to say like there, there was no Fay Dodo or Face Dodo or Fay. Do- we don't, Fine. we didn't, we, don't we, know. Were, we did Spanish in high school. If you know how so to sorry, speak French, right? But anyway, Paul had <laughs> chatine hair or chatain hair or. It's spelled Chantain here, so however you want to do it. But it's like a brownish blonde. But I guess Paul, or Bo, though, was blonde. Yes. Um, but anyway, we, I thought Bo did really great. I liked that. Like, I feel like anymore, that maybe it's our generation, too. When we watched a sort of char- like actors in the 90s who were sort of the heartthrob characters, I don't know, they had like a maturity about them or yes. b- like a broadness. Da, da, da. Whereas now anymore, I feel like it almost gets cast with these like hipster type yeah. guys or something and I'm like nothing wrong with that but that's not the look or yeah. the, the idea that well, we're supposed to get yeah, and I feel like Bo and... like William Mosley was a VC Andrews type of yeah. ideal guy the idealness mm-hmm. and I feel like he did, he was really he did really well Paul was good too now yeah, to be Paul fair we missed probably about the first two and a half three minutes of this and of the movie so we'll watch it I'll, I'm gonna probably catch it tomorrow because we already do Pearl right. in the Mist but the thing is, is that even though it was only like a minute or two in these adaptations of Lifetime, a lot can happen in a minute and a half, two minutes. <laughs> so we are going to have to check that out because I wish that there had been, like you did with the Castile series, for me with the Ruby, I wish there had been a little bit more time in the Bayou. Yes. I, I think it sets up so much of like why Ruby would go back later on. And I feel like... Um, with kind Grand Mirror, bad, I, yeah. I wouldn't have mind seeing a little bit more with Grand Mirror. I did really enjoy that because we're not going to get a prequel, yeah. it wasn't as much of a flashback as I would like, but this was the first one yeah. that had a real mm-hmm. flashback where yeah. you kind of see, like, uh, Gabrielle giving birth real quick. Again, it was just her shadow, but I, I wouldn't have, you know, I wish if they weren't going to do a prequel, then yeah. I wouldn't mind if they started inserting, like, Some of the f- correct, yeah. yeah, to kind of, like, the prequel stuff within... I do wish, though, that they had done more with Grand Mirror. Yeah. Like, I feel... And Naomi Judge! Yeah, exactly. Well, and I, I... Again, we missed the first minute and a half, but I was totally expecting the scene where Grand Mirror goes and gets rid of the yeah, baby's the spirit. Coach evil. Like, Mal. Correct. Again, whatever. French words. French. Yeah. Uh, oh, we don't speak it. <laughs> was that good one? Um, but no, we... <laughs> we did want to see that in there. <laughs> we did want to see that in there, and hopefully, like, I don't know, I'm hoping when we, we catch the first minute and a half, because I'm pretty sure it looks like in the trailer or something, there's a picture of Naomi Jog with the lantern. Going. Yeah, I, and it happens at the beginning it of the book. It must have been the first five so, minutes. We'll we see. missed the first five minutes. All you right. guys can correct us in the comments. Correct. Yeah. But uh, overall, I thought it was a good job. I thought I thought the two lead actresses for Giselle and Ruby were amazing and wonderful. We- I wanted to also point out how you said you liked the paintings, too. Oh, I thought the paintings yeah. did, mm-hmm. were really good. I, I don't know. It was hard for me to imagine when reading the books quite Ruby's style. And I don't feel like this was necessarily what the ghostwriter imagined. But watching the art, I was like, oh, I'm glad yeah. that they look so professional. Because yeah. she is supposed to have this yes. real talent, which is mm-hmm. always a trademark of all the leading yeah. ladies mm-hmm. of uh, the V.C. Andrews series. And 
But yeah, overall, I thought they did a really good job with this adaptation. I, I thought the paintings were really good. I thought the story, it wasn't, it didn't feel too rushed. No. I feel like, you know, we were talking about beforehand with the novel of Ruby, so much of the later ghostwritten stuff is internalized, but yeah. the actual dialogue and scenes are kind of condensed. Yeah. So it's already got an advantage to this. Like yeah. I was saying, it, it takes Absolutely. place over less time, so it's easier to make a flowed adaptation. And I think, too, with the ghostwritten stuff, we don't need... You know how we're always talking about we want voiceovers? Right. And I don't think it's really necessary with this. Like well, With this one, I yeah. I wasn't wishing for it. I agree I, with this. This is weird? the first yeah. one where I felt like... it Because it, the other ones, it, so much time goes by, yeah. it feels jerky. Yeah. Whereas in this, because it doesn't take place... Like I said, you know, If There Be Thorns is not my favorite of the Dolling Anger series, but I think it was one of the better adaptations because it takes place yeah. over less time. Mm -hmm. Gates of Paradise, Web of Dreams, yeah. I feel like... Those are the shorter shorter time periods and the better yeah. of the adaptations. And I think it helped with this one. I think so too. Absolutely. And I think it's gonna it's gonna really help with Pearl and the Mist because not as much yeah. overall time happens. It's really just one school year. Mm -hmm. So it's able to do that. And even and some of the little things that they changed, like her escaping the house with mm -hmm. uh Buster Treha. Oh right. right. Yeah. Oh, where, that was an intense scene. Yeah, where I forgot it was about kind that. of like a, you know, she kind of attacked them yeah. and whatever in the book she just kind of slips, slips out of there. Out, yeah. But I didn't think it took away from Not the adaptation. No. Um there was also a few subtle changes um that we saw throughout the course of the film, but I, I don't think that, like normally we're very, very picky. Yeah. And I think in this one it just works. Yeah. Somebody was I, listening and it just for worked. For sure. Yeah. I think like it yeah, that scene with uh, with Buster and yeah. Ruby and Grand Pierre and all that could have been like hokey, or they could have been just for the sake of having something dramatic. Yeah. But I actually think it works. Yeah, I feel like I like because again, it goes back to I feel like they made Ruby just a little bit of a stronger character yeah. in this one. And, and then then when she is in the book. In the book, she's not, like, just meek and wandering around, but she's almost too perfect. Yeah. Too, and, she, like, things are always happening to her, and she, she does fight back, but it's always, like, way late. This one, I felt like yeah. she was trying to do the right thing, but she also was like, no, you're not going to talk to me like that. And I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed that she yeah. fought back against Buster in a very intense way. Her grandpa, I was I was like, was she going to kill him? I know, like, well, what? Right? I did like how they even had Paul come back at the end. Because that does happen at the end Correct, of the yeah. And it I really, almost ends with like a comedy. I like a, I enjoyed well, it that. Was like, there was like three minutes left. I'm like, what else could happen? And then when she comes out and sees Paul and she's so yeah. excited. And you're like, and you know what? In the books, I, I felt like, oh, Paul, like you're her brother. Like stop yeah. going around. But when she saw him, and I guess like it, I almost felt her like, oh my God, there's a part of home. For sure. And like, I Which really is the only reason like, I wish they had done a little bit more in the body. Yeah, yeah. How you felt, and I felt I agreed with you, but you felt really strongly about in the Castile series, you wish a little bit more has been spent in the willies to lead up to why heaven would ever want to go the back bayou there stuff and Ruby. for me i feel like the bayou really because it is going to be such a plot point by the end of pearl and the mist and all that and i was like well i wish a little bit more had been set with with grand mirror and the and the bayou but yeah. all the big stuff happens in the second half of the book and it's definitely gonna like enhance the giselle her father daphne stuff and again i just i think that was it was a, the right choice Personally, I wish a little bit more had been spent the Bayou. I think that the reason we differ on this one a little bit is because you kind of already really remember what happens when she goes back to the Bayou, mm -hmm. and I'm not quite there. Like I said, I'm rereading. Yeah. So, I, for me, the Bayou stuff, getting through that part of Ruby is really difficult for me. I like all the action of New Orleans and when she's mm -hmm. there and all that. So always getting through that first part of the of Ruby is very hard sure. for me. So that's why I think I was okay. I don't think they need as much. I don't think yeah. they need every single detail yeah. from the Bayou. I think just one more scene to like just uh, just of her like because she it's a big yeah. thing that she like rose through the thing yeah. and it's gonna be a plot point with Paul later on and mm -hmm. I think like for her to really to understand that like. Gabrielle really knew the bayou. Yeah. Ruby grew up the same way, really knowing the bayou, yeah. which is going to be, it, it is kind of, I mean, who knows, I don't know how they're going to adapt all that glitters to differentiate this, but it is kind of a, yeah. a it is a plot point that happens later on, yeah. but, but all right.
Overall, we loved it. Yeah, I, th we've, I think it's the best one so far. I, 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 I might be up there yeah. with you. And really looking forward to seeing what they do with Pearl in the Mist, which will be coming up next. All right, so we just finished watching Pearl in the Mist, and I gotta say, I really, really enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we. I don't know why I asked her because I know she enjoyed it. We just watched <laughs> it together. The previous reviews that we've done on VC Andrews have been more retrospective, reflective. We've had time yeah. to sit with it. We just watched it, you know, so this is really, like we said in the beginning of the episode, you're getting a very fresh experience from it. And I'll say that a Pearl, you know, Pearl in the Mist, always the second book in any series has always been my favorite. And I got to admit with the Laundry series, it really wasn't my favorite. I feel like it's not a lot happens. There's stuff that happens, right. but it's so like few and far between. Mm -hmm. But I think that works well for an adaptation on Lifetime, at least because oh, yeah. You have these shorter spans of time, yeah. but like you can make the action happen. And I was just so excited because there were moments to the film. I felt mm -hmm. like I was kind of watching a film, like the montage at the end yeah. with the, um, <clears throat> like, when did you find out that she's pregnant yeah. and all that. And again, spoilers, spoilers. I didn't say that at the beginning. I did put a little spoiler in there for you. Note, but officially, you know, but with the baby and stuff, when she was like kind yeah. of developing mm -hmm. and all that I, I enjoyed that it was like a moment to breathe it wasn't yeah. jerky etc and i also want to jump back to say uh because now that i have we've had 24 hours to think about it with the character of paul both the the paul and the father paul i'm glad that they did the way the, the actor played him it wasn't like you see this oncoming madness that we know is going to be there for all that glitters but like you get sort of a hint of it. I felt yeah. the actor sort of, he wasn't obvious about it, but he, you could see the sort of tantrums within him. The sort of like, he can go into a rage. And uh, with the dad, we didn't really talk about, I just, um, the ghostwriter tended to always make like, one evil parent and one super weak parent. And yeah. it kind of got frustrating after a while. But I do really like that Ruby was able to develop so quickly a relationship. We watched this with our friend Gina and she was kind of like, wow, he just took her in. And I'm like, well, I think that's a pretty normal reaction. Right. You know, like I, I could see 100% some a parent being hesitant that this child is like, hey, I'm your child. And you, like, I can understand a parent being hesitant, but I just as much can understand a yeah. parent being like, wow, especially when it's like, your look-alike child, and you know, I all I, I don't let you. I'll let you speak in just one second. The last thing I really want to say is about the character Giselle. I love how she was developed. I I said before that I think the Ghostwriter's creation of Giselle was the closest to a uh, VC Andrews character, a, a sem, you know, a so-called villain that has feelings and emotions and three dimensions. And I really like how they're taking Giselle. You can see like by the end of Pearl in the Mist that. She's writing the letter to Ruby, yeah. and I think, like, even in the books when you're reading it, when she's away from Ruby, she misses Ruby. Yeah. She really does want family. She wants to be loved, but her problem is that she was an only child that was incredibly spoiled, mm -hmm. and how, you know, I think most only children, when they're first brought with a sibling, it's sort of like an adjustment, yeah. but when the sibling looks exactly like you and is your twin, and then all of a sudden you've lost all that attention that made you unique out externally... I would probably be jealous too and upset. But Danielle, I know that you didn't have a chance to really all the way go through and read yeah. Pearl in the Mist. But as a as a movie, as an adaptation, as a continuation of the Lifetime Ruby series, what did you think of it? So you, I actually really enjoyed the parts with Louie. Oh, they were really good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I in the books you're kind of like she's with Bo, like knock it off, you know that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But actually, like when I was watching this, I really liked that she had somebody to kind of stick up for her. Yeah. It kind of made her like special because it was like the whole school was like against her for and then sure. once like was abigail went away it's like almost yeah. like she was alone but she still had louie you know it what really, i mean it yeah. was like he was great God for louie you know what i mean they, they did such a wonderful job there and i just think how it kind of flowed through it hit the major points that it needed to hit, and it really stuck to the script. One hundred percent. Well, the, the book, yeah. Except, yeah. Like, I mean, That's it was, it, yeah, and it was. You're one hundred percent right, though. It was bam, 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 yeah. bam, and it was a really. I almost kind of now wonder back in these. The, I think Pearl mm. the Mist was nineteen ninety four. It was written maybe right. ninety three, ninety four, and ninety five, ninety six was when they were first starting to talk yeah. about adapting the Ruby series to Lifetime. Like, that was a thing. Yeah. And I have to think maybe the ghostwriter, when he was writing these, must have had some sort yeah. of, maybe he wrote these 
for a film because you know flowers in the attic 87 was the mm -hmm. only one that was out at that time and he probably was sort of like well why aren't mine you know mine being adapted right. so it was andrew Niederman. he had had the devil's advocate um the playmates movie i think it was the maddening yeah. so he had some movies but he was probably a little bit like well why aren't any of my vc andrews books being made into movies and this one lended itself very much to that i think at least <clears throat> for me and i know you and, and i have talked a little bit about this but Pearl in the Mist is really like, a, can anybody else crap on Ruby? So true. And it's like so true. one thing after another. So and I true. like how this book did, or the movie didn't yes. drag. Sorry, guys, I'm a little tired. Got my bedtime. <laughs> um, but how it just went from, you know, kind of point to point, and it didn't drag out some of those things in the book where you're like, come yes. on already. Like, it's quit so knocking true. on Ruby. Thousand percent you know? agree. It's um, true. It really is. I mean, and that's the Ghost Rider yeah. style. We were talking a little bit during the commercial breaks. You have yeah. Dawn. I feel like Dawn and Ruby are both characters on a chessboard where he, uh, the Ghost Rider kind of rearranged a yeah. few things. Like, what went wrong with Dawn? It didn't happen to Ruby. What could have gone wrong with Dawn did go wrong with Ruby. He just mm. kind of switched things around, which is fine overall because they are two different stories, and yeah. he definitely put them in different locations, different characters. But the one thing that I liked that the movie did was mm -hmm. sort of take the more broad strokes of the books and really yeah. human humanize Daphne, Absolutely. humanize Giselle. Yeah. I mean, I think the Ghost Rider did a pretty good job at humanizing Giselle, at least. Yeah. But he really, they really did in the film. And it didn't feel so much like, because, yeah, when you're reading the books, it's the same thing. It's like you have evil evil Claire, uh, Claiborne, mm. uh, Mrs. Claiborne, evil Iron Ironwood. Wood. Yeah. yeah, evil Daphne. And it's mm -hmm. just bam, bam, bam. And it's so, like, it's, yeah. it's, it's frustrating. And it did lead to a moment that I said, mm -hmm. which I struggle with, but in the film adaptation where Ruby pushes Giselle out, I have mixed emotions of because I don't think the character of Ruby would have ever done that. But I also felt like the character of Ruby in the novel is so, like, playing the martyr all the time. Yeah. Always sort of like, I'm just, she's perfect. Even if she's not perfect, it's like making her more perfect than she's not perfect and so i really liked in the movie that she did this because there are a thousand times in the books where you're like push her out of the chair you're like just yeah. do something and i feel like whoever adapted this kind of had that feeling reading it and yeah. they're like you know what we're gonna have ruby push just out of the chair <laughs> she would never have done that and i kind of love that she yeah. did it it's terrible uh you also mentioned abby what did you think of the whole abby storyline because i'm so glad that they covered it i was wondering how yeah. they were going to handle that and I mean, in the South at that time, yeah. I just think like was such a it happened all the time yeah. story that they. I'm glad they didn't like they well, made it a, a centerpiece of the first half did, of the movie. And I think that you know, with the times that we're in and everything that's going yeah. on, I think it was important to say like this stuff still continues to happen. Absolutely. And I think it was really important to keep that storyline in there as it was. And it, sure. and it was handled exactly how it was in the book in the best possible yeah. ways. Like where you sort of have, you already have the prejudices against Ruby for being a Cajun. Yeah. But then you have this whole other layer of this this girl who can quote unquote pass. Yeah. And so the fact that like she's tr like in the book, it sort of becomes the parents finally see that Abby, it's not because they, they're they're finally achieving like, wait, we're, we are better than this school, yes. than this. And it's still a struggle that they're going to have to face and fight, but at least they're going to be true to themselves, yeah. which is not an easy thing to do. Correct. And so the fact, like, I just, I thought they handled it well. Yeah, yeah and then I message. also really did like the Louis stuff too. In yeah. the books, I, I'm always sort of like, because the whole scene with Louis when he's telling her in the book, mm -hmm. I am super uncomfortable yeah. reading it. I was uncomfortable watching it. And it is uncomfortable, but, yeah. it, but I thought they handled it well. Yeah. Again, it was just, it was uh, uncomfortable enough, but almost you want it, your heart kind of breaks for it, and you see Ruby crying on there, and I'm like, yeah. they just, they really got Ruby. Everybody mm -hmm. that was involved with this, Pearl in the Mist and Ruby, they really did a good job yeah, with, did. I just, uh, I really enjoyed it, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think that um, it was enjoyable to watch. I know you were kind of worried when we got halfway through, and you're like, how can we be here already? And yeah. I'm like, it's halfway through, and yeah. you're like, I guess that's kind of right. Um, I know you did comment about Bo coming back, so I wanted to oh, talk a little yeah, bit about that. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I thought it was appropriate, because I know, like... It well, all... let's set it up. Yeah, the, okay. okay, so <laughs> in the books, you know, obviously Ruby and Bo come together. She gets pregnant. Yeah. She goes off to Daphne, who then sends her to the abortion clinic, who then Ruby is like, no, I'm out of here. There's no... Bo comes in and has yeah. one last moment, one last moment. And I think that they did that cinematically for their reasons, but what were you going to say? And then I'll follow up with that. I like that because I think, you know, in the yeah. books, you're kind of like, come on, Bo. Like, Because he's kind of a jerk. In the, he's I not know. an obvious jerk. He's like a cowardly yeah. jerk in it. Like, But I think the thing that I also had to remember when I was reading, you know, All That Glitters again, too, yeah. and, and at this one, too, was that the time period. Um, they didn't have, like, he couldn't call long distance from France, Correct, even yeah. though they were rich. Yeah. You know, it's like, 
He probably couldn't do that. Plus, I like how in this the adaptation they said, like, if you ever even speak to Ruby, you're being disinherited. Right. And I like how they kind of brought him in, this, and Ruby says, no, I don't want you to be disinherited. For sure. And I think it adds a little bit more to the character, which is what we always say in the life, in any adaptation. Agree completely. Yeah, so Agree I, completely. Because I, it I also sets it. up for, yeah. because we, I mean, though, the, those of you that have read the books, I assume yeah. if you're watching this episode, you are VC <laughs> Andrews fans and have read these. And I'll tell you, I, I did enjoy it being put back in. Yeah. Because I think in the books, he doesn't come back, which really pushes Ruby to be with Paul. Yeah. But when you're watching these sort of adaptations from a cinematic point yeah. of view, you sort of need that like connection later on so that you're kind of like, I know why she's going back yeah. to Bo. Whereas in the books, it's kind of like he had to have a reason for her to choose Paul yeah. and get married. But in this case, it, it's a little moment that will then, but it's really about the long term. Yeah. And in the long term, it's about ending up back with Bo. And again, like I said, this was the the book Pearl in the Mist is not my favorite, but I really enjoyed the adaptation yeah. so far. Ruby, Pearl and the Mist were excellent. Yes. I am super excited to watch all that glitters because I think that's the most interesting of the laundry series. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just I really enjoyed it. Yeah, we did enjoy it. Um, I'm really excited about all that glitters. I did make a comment though when we were watching this. Sure, and we okay. Got a and we, bit this, of this I think this will be an interesting conversation. Yeah. So. <clears throat> I said, you know, when we watched Flowers in the Attic, uh, or the um, Dolan Ganger series, oh, I said Ganger, just for you, <laughs> um, in the Castile series, I was really, like, irritated when they would change the characters. Yeah. Not so much in the Dolan Ganger, because I, the first Kathy. Well, was, I had you know, wished, I had wished yeah. that the Pearl, or the Petals on the Wind cast, Kathy Chris, yeah. had come back for If There Be yes. Thorns. And I, they did it so that if there be thorn seeds of yesterday would be, yeah. but I feel like there would have been an even bigger age jump if yeah. you had had petals on the wind. If there be thorns cast, then the seeds of yesterday yeah. cast. You think that for all that glitters, the cast should have been aged or should be aged, and it looks like they're going to use the same yes. cast. I just think that the girls do look young. I, sure. So I remember when we were watching Ruby on Saturday, I thought, oh, you know, this is the time where I really want them to age them. I knew they weren't going to for Pearl and the Mist just because they're still in high school, basically. Right. But now that I'm hoping that they're kind of out of high school and it's kind of going to transition to them into early adulthood and stuff like that, that they were going to age them. Obviously, the preview for all that glitters, that's not going to happen, but... You know, we'll see what happens. I just, it was a weird thought that I had had. Sure. I usually I don't like when I they I can change. understand it, though. I think, I think it reminds much. me of the problem that you had with Fanny. You felt like she was too young. Yeah. For the role for the third movie, you thought she was good, yeah. good, well placed mm -hmm. for one and two. For me personally, I am happy that they're keeping the cast. I think there's going to be a motion, more of an emotional yeah, arc. Maybe, yeah. I am it's more concerned with how they're going to age for Hidden Jewel because they yeah. are going to have to age them. I, I'm assuming, but with my my thing is that I think like by all that glitters. It feels like they're older when we're reading it, but if they're you really not, if you yeah. think about it, they really are only about 21, 22. Yeah. And I know that because I just started, um, I'm reading Hidden Jewel right now for yeah. this week, and uh, Ruby is 36 in it. And just uh, comment on the earlier part of this episode when we were talking about the hair color in Hidden Jewel, Pearl, who is blonde and looks like she is not going to be blonde at all for her Hidden Jewel, the movie. Uh, she says her mother, Ruby, has ruby-colored hair, which was her namesake, which I don't think was ever her namesake, no. but it is confirmed in Hidden Jewel, written by the ghostwriter, who also started randomly spelling Gabrielle as Gabriel. I'll never <laughs> understand that. It's confirmed that her hair was red, but she is 36, Ruby, in Hidden Jewel, meaning, you know, she was about 17 or so when she gave birth, and if yeah. Pearl's about two or three during, you mm -hmm. know, by the yeah, end of all the clips, yeah. yes, they're about they're about 20-ish, so I think it's, completely it's fitting. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not like with, you know, the I get it, though, I get it. Because the time spans are so much longer Correct, than this, yeah. and they're just not. So I agree with the casting. Which was a ghostwriter thing, you know. His yeah. his books take place like Ruby. The whole first the first three books really take place over like three and a half yeah, four years. Very quick. Whereas you know, Flowers of the Attic book one I'm was. I'm glad you said that they changed the name because as yeah. I was reading all the glitters, yeah. I feel like it ch the maid changed from Holly to Molly. That's possible. Okay. He does do that a lot, but okay. I, I'll not. You know, I didn't think about it when <laughs> I was. I was like, am I going 
crazy? I feel like I must have been right around 15, just 14 or 15 when I read Tarnished Gold. Mm -hmm. I didn't catch it in all that glitters, but I was reading it. I, I didn't even think about it. It just said Gabriel, but I kept reading it as Gabriel. I didn't think about it. But now as an adult, I'm like, wait, that started Gabriel, like the male. And it, I'm like, but it started Gabrielle. Right, right, right. People write by right. name Daniel. All right, right, right. Uh, it's the masculinized it version really of it. Is. And I mean, it's not a big deal, but I would think if I was writing these novels, I would have double checked that, wait, I started this correctly. And I went here, which is, I know people out there have problems with the word, the name Corinne in Flowers the Attic from Garden of Shadows. It changes so many times to like the double R, double N to single R, single R, et cetera, et cetera. So just fun facts for you. But again, overall, nitpicky um, facts. super nitpicky. <laughs> That's what us VC Andrews fans do though and um anyway so please comment yes. tell us what you thought did you enjoy these adaptations are you looking forward to next weekend which we will be filming another uh two-part single episode yep. uh, on both movies because we're super excited. I just think they did a really great yes. job for it. I feel like, I mean, I don't know what people could really complain about with Pearl and Mist because it was like a literal adaptation. Yeah. S slight things. I will say the only thing I thought was a little obnoxious was the marketing where they tried to, like, if you watch the oh, commercial yeah. for Pearl and the Mist, it looks like it's going to be this, like, dramatic, action-y thing. Now, reading the book just very recently for the for anticipation of this, I was like, that's going to be the Louis scene. I know it's his mother, father, the yeah. whole thing. And and I'm like, they're trying to make it see. I would feel cheated if I was a not a VC Andrews fan waiting to see Pearl in the Mist, right. not knowing how it's going to go. I'd be like, that's what that whole thing was, that whole commercial. But anyway, tell us below uh, what you thought. And all trailers For do that. sure, for sure. But see, I think there's just as much interesting stuff. And all that glitters, the trailer we just watched, like revealed the whole I know. switch, I everything. We've been like trying, we were watching this with our friend Gina, and we would try not to give anything away. And I'm like, oh, well, that trailer just kind of told you the whole plot. So way I to go. She wasn't watching. She, I mean, she wa <laughs> that's our Gina, though, not paying attention all the way. So that's good. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching another episode of Form One Pod Culture, where real people talk about really everything. Have a good one. Correct. Yeah, yeah to kind of like the prequel stuff within, and uh, so uh, okay. Sorry, I have the worst itch on my nose, and I'm like, it's all I can think about. I'm you better let me finish my thought. <laughs> like, it's not like you were talking. I've been waiting. Yeah. Your Grammy year, you had wished they had done more with I know, I know. Okay, well then don't say you didn't remember. I didn't say I didn't remember. Oh my God, go I before you, you could, forget. I, well, no, I'm going to make my point. Uh, three, oh, you have to, no. <laughs> then you know if you had to do the three, two, one. Are you going to get yourself together? Three, she drank a lot of coffee. Three, <laughs> yes, I did. Three, two, one. John Amos.